In the second part of this lesson, we've just looked at pre-shot routine, but now we're going to look at grip and posture. I spend my life teaching grip and posture. Sometimes it's not fashionable because when you change a pupil's posture and their grip, you make them feel uncomfortable. And lots of pros won't grasp the nettle and take the punishment. If a pupil comes to me with poor grip and poor posture, I am going to deal with it in almost all cases. But, as I just said, when you change the grip, you seem to change everything for the pupil, tension sets in, and you can disrupt their flow and their feeling for the shot. But, like being a good dentist, if root canal is needed, then root canal is what you prescribe. Now, when we talk about grip and posture, it's a bit like the chicken and the egg. With a chicken and the egg, we don't know which comes first, but we're absolutely certain that one causes the other. Now, for me, it's the same with grip and posture. I'm not sure which comes first, but I know that one is related to the other. To me, you cannot have a really good grip if you don't have good posture. And you can't really have good posture if the grip isn't formed properly. So they feed off each other and they work together. All right. Now, I've got a, a simple teaching aid here. I used to do this with a comb. And sadly, I don't use a comb anymore. And it wouldn't work with a sponge. So I use a folded 20 pound note. Now, if I fold, I fold that 20 pound note three ways, so it's like a thin strip, but this represents your body, shoulder, hips and feet. Now, if I twist the top of the 20 pound note through 90 degrees, the whole 20 pound note is involved in the movement. There's a lovely radial curve as I twist the top, okay? And the beauty is that physically and mentally, it means that from the shoulders down, torso, hips, knees, legs and feet is automatic. If you turn the top of this properly, everything functions. Now, that is good posture. You've only got to slump a little bit and this doesn't work. Can you see that? Only the top end twists. So good posture ensures that your entire body works because of the shoulder turn. So if I turn to the camera now, this is my best posture. I put my feet golf and distance apart. I have two inches of knee flex, and then I tip from the hips to build my grip. So I tip forward. Now, if my backside is against a wall and I tip forward, I would fall over. There is a natural counterbalancing that I want you to understand for your posture. So here I go, knees flexed, spine in its correct line. I mustn't drop the chin to see the ball. The ball comes into view by virtue of tipping from the hip. Now for every inch my shoulders tip forward, my backside goes out. If my weight were on scales, they would stay 50-50, toe to heel. So here is normal. This would be driver posture. This would be six arm posture. And this would be wedge posture. It's absolutely vital that the angle of the spine changes with the club in use. So many of you at home will think that the setup is the same and the backswing is the same, but it can't be. There's 12 degrees difference between the plane of a driver and the plane of a wedge. There's a dramatic change that you have to take into uh, consideration when you're setting up. So let's put that into the pre-shot routine. I present the club with the right hand and now I tip from the hip. So this is normal. Driver, three wood, five wood, three, four, five, six. That is my six arm posture, okay? Now, by tipping from the hip, it ensures that my arms swing free of the body and come slightly off my rib cage. You can see that. Off the club, tip from the hip. Now, once I've found my balance point, all I have to do, because my shoulder line is automatic, is allow my feet to fall in line. Now, Going back to my sort of 20 pound note analogy, here I am. I'm going to turn the top of my body, the shoulder line, through 90 degrees. You can see that my tummy, hips, knees and feet have been pulled into action. When I hit the shot, I will go the other way. My body angle will remain the same. And after that, I will maintain my posture in a good shot. Now, a lot of you will be doing this at the golf course next weekend. You'll be preparing with your body quite well and you'll be turning with your body quite well. But as you hit the shot, you're probably going to stand up and your posture is going to change. Now let me tell you, if you start here and stand up, the amount you stand up is how far left of target the ball is going to go. 
Shall I say that again? If you swing back in balance and swing through, that is what we want. If you stand up, the amount you stand up is how far left the ball will start. And that could mean pulling your arms with draw spin or cutting your driver back into a slice. You get a slightly different reaction according to the loft on the club face. Now again, I can't hold the club well if I don't have good posture. So I lean forward and my arms hang in slightly. If I stand up, we're all made like this. The hands don't hang at our sides like a soldier. They fall in by about 45 degrees. So as I lean forward, I have to turn my palms to face each other. That is neutral bone structure in the forearms. So my hands naturally hang thus. I tip from the hip and then I turn my palms to square. Can you see that? If I was holding a book or clasping my hands, that's how the forearms are going to behave. Now, it was Steve Elkin that said that if he had con um, cosmetic surgery on his grip, he'd have his thumbs sewed to his forefingers, which is a bit drastic, but I do agree with what Steve is saying. If you keep your left thumb next to your index finger, when you lean forward, the left thumb will run parallel to the shaft right of centre. Okay? You don't want a long left thumb, you'll overswing. It's the neatness of the thumb. So the posture permits that neatness. There's, there are my arms hanging. I lean forward, I turn my hands to square. Can you see that this thumb doesn't go past that knuckle on the index finger? If it does, we've got a problem. So the posture permits the grip to be good in the left hand. If the grip is good in the left hand, the right hand's going to fit it. Okay, let's look at that in action. I off the club. I tip from the hip. In other words, my posture is creating my grip for me. I form my grip and the grip returns the favour because the grip has aligned my shoulders. And if my shoulders are on line, then all I've got to do is plant my feet and confirm my ball position. Okay, there's the preparation. One waggle, coil and release. So there you have it. Good grip requires good posture and you can't have good posture without a good grip. They feed off each other. And again, you can work at this indoors. You don't have to go to the golf course to practice this. In the lounge or in the corridor with a long skirting board, it's a great place to practice your grip and your posture. And if you've got a mirror, you can see yourself side on and face on, that's also a great help.